Hello, my name is Terry Kylo. I'm the Executive Director of Paths to Understanding. I have been serving as a Lutheran pastor for 31 years, and I've been working in the Episcopal Church since 2002. So something happened to me a few years ago. Um, I was in an interfaith conversation with a Muslim and a Buddhist, and I began to realize how much fear and bigotry people had toward our, our Muslim partner in the conversation. And he and I began to do some speaking around the Salish Sea, um, starting in Oak Harbor, Washington, actually, uh, to counter the anti-Muslim bigotry that we saw. And from the stage, I saw things that really disturbed me. Uh, I saw the, the amount of fear and hate and disinformation that my Muslim neighbor faced every single time he spoke. I also saw how gracious he was and, and how kind he was to people because he knew that those folk just had kind of fear taken them over um, because of the false information, the slander, uh, the dehumanizing language that people had, um, had given them. And so what I began to realize as we did that work was that everywhere we went, we heard the same questions with the same vocabulary, uh, spoken in almost the same order. And then upon doing some research learned that American Muslims have a raid against them, a whole bunch of anti-Muslim hate groups that spend 30, 40, 50 million a year, it's hard to tell right now, um, uh, to dehumanize them and to divide American citizens, divide human beings against each other, essentially by sharing lies. And one of those lies was acted upon on San Juan Island. Uh, that American Muslims uh, engage in female genital mutilation. Now, FGM, as it's known uh, for short, um, is a cultural practice in Northeastern Africa that some people practice. And, and I don't personally agree with the practice at all, of course. Um, but uh, so a lot of different religious groups have sort of taken on this cultural, broader cultural practice. And uh, and then, of course, you know, when you have a tradition and you engage in some kind of practice, you want to justify that practice. And that's what's happened for the Jewish communities that live there and that, that have this practice, for the Christian communities and also for the Muslim communities, but for lots of other traditions as well. They all kind of find some rationale within their tradition for it, even if it's not really there. And so what happened is that the anti-Muslim hate groups uh, began to really push this, this disinformation out, this dehumanizing language out about American Muslims. But they don't provide context. They don't tell you what it really means. And what that does is that, that classically activates anger in people, right? And that's the way dehumanizing language works, right? It, it, it activates something that we care about, some, some value we have. And it says that uniquely some other group or set of groups is, is a threat to what you love. And that's the, that's the power that they use. They use love and manipulation to turn us against each other. So it's really important, to, I realized in 2015, 2016, that, um, that myself as a Lutheran pastor, Episcopal priest, um, as a Christian, as a white person, a white cisgender male, uh, that I be among those who are standing behind our American Muslim sisters and brothers. That that's just incredibly important. Because when one member of our community is threatened, like it's up to the rest of us to stand up. And so I want to thank you for taking part in standing up with Richard and Farah and Everin, but also for standing up for all those on San Juan Island who may not have been treated as they should, who have experienced uh, some kind of harassment or some kind of oppression or some kind of um, lack of, of uh, equal protection under the law. It's just really important for all of us to do that. But it's also important for us to understand how to do it. So one of the things that I've learned over the last six or seven years is that when allies of American Muslims or any group really um, sort of misbehave if they get too uh, wrapped up in their rage, if they start screaming at people, if they start saying negative things on Facebook or whatever, well, that doesn't come back on them. It comes back, the consequences are there for the Muslim community, right? And I've, I've seen many times when people who want to be allies with American Muslims just 
really don't take a moment, take a deep breath, and think that they've got to have a, a calm strategy. That we've got to we we got to not only um, try to push back against the disinformation, but we have to win a, a deeper game, which is uh, to create a community in which everyone's humanity is honored, even those who are currently captivated by fear. So we've come up with some national partners, uh, sort of a, a, a strategy for communicating for change with individuals. And the first part is to meet the emotion, not the myth. And, and part of this is to say, hey, look, you know, I, I understand that you feel upset about this, don't you? You feel angry about this thing that you've heard. And you don't want to necessarily repeat uh, what they've heard, right? But you, you can understand the emotion that people are going through. And then what you got to kind of do is to reframe the conversation, if, if possible, and to say, hey, look, you know, um, there's a lot of things that are said about a lot of groups out there in the world that aren't necessarily true. And, and then you want to go on and build on shared values. So you can say something like, hey, you know, as an American citizen, I really believe in freedom of religion, you know, and I know you do too, right? And you can start to get on the inside of their circle. You can kind of build some credibility with them by building on some shared values. And believe it or not, there are shared values that almost all Americans believe in, even if we disagree about how to like live those out. And But the, the next part is really important. Uh, once you've built on some shared values with this person, then you want to tell a positive humanizing story because the only way to counter a negative false story is to tell a positive humanizing one, right? And of course, a lot of times what people will say is, well, yeah, I'm sure there's a few good of whatever group that they're feeling anxious about. But that's when you can follow with a little bit of facts and data. For instance, like if uh, the person is really anxious about how Islam uh, values women, women and women's rights, uh, you can say that, you know, American Muslim women as a, as a group are, are the highest educated group in the country. You can also share things like 50% uh, of American Muslim women wear a hijab and 50% choose not to. And it is, in fact, choice uh, of theirs uh, in Islam because Islam teaches that uh, there shall be no compulsion in religion. You can't force religion or a religious practice on anyone. That's actually what Islam teaches. So you can follow with a little bit of facts and data. But then here's the really big one. Like, so I've been working on this for five or six, actually seven years now. And um, and I am very, you know, I'm every day, like come in contact with some sort of anti-Muslim bigotry in myself, right? And so what I often say to people is that like, I'm still learning and growing about this too, because I've lived in a culture that has taught me a lot of negative things about American Muslims. And, and so um, I've gone through a whole lot of change in the last seven years, right? And, uh, and, and that sort of gives people a permission structure, you know, f to be able to enter into change themselves. Because I'm not sitting here saying, hey, I'm all righteous and you're all bad. But rather, I want to continue a conversation with you and walk on a journey with you to get to know some American Muslims, right? Uh, to get to know more uh, about, about them, to learn more about whatever other group folk are anxious about at the moment. Okay, so that's a little bit of strategy. And here are some messages that really work. Okay. First of all, our country was founded on the principle of freedom of religion. We do not tell people how to pray or not pray, and we do not ban people based on their choice of religion or no religion. That message works. Everyone believes in freedom of religion or no religion in this country. Number two, no one should fear for their safety because of the color of their skin, what language they speak, or how they pray. We need more acceptance and love and less fear. Everyone uh, really believes this. A vast majority of Americans believe it, even if they are feeling fearful of some other group, right? Uh, we are stronger when we come together as Americans and weaker when we let lack of understanding come between us. United we stand, divided we fall. Again, this is saying that no matter what our identity, right, as me as a cisgender white male Christian, like I am part of larger groups as well. I am part of an American group. I'm part of a human group. And, and we need to understand each other better so that we can stand united. Now, those three were all tested by a group called Rethink Media. There's some other ones that are a bit shorter that we found are very effective. Number one, we should learn from people directly from them and not about them from third parties. 
Hey, we, we all want that. It is wrong to apply collective blame to a community for the acts of individuals. And again, all of us want that. We don't want to be to blame for some action that some person who's part of a group we're in does, right? They're responsible for that, not us. So those messages really do work. But mostly, I just want to thank you for standing with Everin, for standing with Farah and Richard, um, and for all those on San Juan Island who haven't had equal protection under the law, who have not always been respected and welcomed as members of this community. Because the reality is the reason I left my pastoral career in order to stand with American Muslims was very simple. It was because I felt that it's the, right, it's the responsibility of the majority to stand up for the rights of minorities. That's our job. When we stand up for each other's rights, we, we build a more peaceful, uh, more humane, and more positive future for everyone. And, and also, it's not just a responsibility, it's also a joy. Because in this work, I've gotten to know my American Muslim neighbors and, and got to know activists from so many different uh, groups, um, all working together, not just for the benefit of one group, but for the benefit of all Americans, for the benefit of all human beings. And so we want, I want to thank you personally for, um, for standing with them and for standing with all those on the island who, who we, we can stand with right now and stand behind and help build a more positive, peaceful future for San Juan Island. Now, you can learn more. If you want to do some more work, you can go to, go to uh, www.pathsnetwork.org. We have some free courses there on how to counter anti-Muslim bigotry. You can also go to www.factsoverfear.org, where we have an online class. We have, essentially have videotaped classes. We also have a series of, of animated videos uh, that can really help uh, counter some of the disinformation out there uh, that myself and, and my friend Anila Afsali have put together. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you soon.